everyone, so right now, I'm about to start a Quackle game analysis. Quackle is a software that is used to um, generate moves and help players to analyze whether their moves are good or bad. So in this situation, I will be using a game which I played with one of the top players in Singapore with initials HW. So uh, these are real racks that uh, were taken from my in-game uh, tournament game with him uh, okay so let me just get started so in this game i was the first to start and here was the uh, best that optimal rack that i drew okay pause the video for a moment to think about what three letter words would you play are you ready for the answer okay so the first one that comes to mind might be the word fox or hawks Okay, so there is a F O X G O X H O X. Okay, so the software is uh, actively ranking them as I speak. Okay, so um, the software knows because it processes the full dictionary uh, while considering the regs. So it knows that certain combinations are tougher because they have fewer words. So the better ones will rank higher, higher up on this list. Okay, but the word that you should really know here is Z H O. Okay. ZHO okay, is uh, important because it is a good ZH dumper. You notice that there are very few ZH words that are three letters. Okay, but in this case, seems like the program does not agree with me. Okay, so um, that is fine. Okay, I have played it uh, in this really interesting um, center position. Okay, let me just try to verify this is correct first. Let me just verify, yeah? Okay, so because his next move is uh, this strange word, let me check that his course is correct. No, okay, uh, let me shift it up by one place. So I, I placed it uh, center as usual because I didn't want to expose the O beside a double letter. Note that if you expose the O beside a double letter, you can knowingly set up OX, which I already have. Okay, this works against new players who are not experienced. But in this case, because uh, he is number two in Singapore, so I am not going to take my chances with anything funny. I will just play the HO as per normal. So he replies with this very interesting move of uh, MVULE. Okay, MVULE. Uh, okay. Sorry, let me just enter the move and fix it in place. He plays MVULE for 25 points. And he does this in a very strange fashion because this layout okay, is not normal for a starting position. Okay, but thankfully, because there are no two letter words with V, he's actually not exposing column H. Okay, so that's something interesting to note. However, he is also aware that what he's exposing is ZE blank. So at this moment, you can open Ziziva and check which are the three letter words with ZE blank. And you guessed it, there is one of the letters that I have uh, already held. So in fact, I have both ZEP, P being three points, and of course ZEX. So ZEX hits hard. Okay, that's why it's important to be aware of such big scoring tiles. So of course, given this gift, I would take it for 69 points. 69 points for a 3 letter words is considered very insane. Next, he plays NOT, N-O-T, for 17. So at this point, uh, you do not need to worry too much because, you see, U-P-O is being played. Although there's a double letter here, yes, okay, but uh, upon looking it up, okay, you will realize that U-P-O does not take an S. It only takes an N, in fact. So he either has a second N or he doesn't. Okay, it's not a big concern. Okay, so let's just leave it as that. Okay, then here's my next rec. F E R M H N G. So if I were to spell it in a stranger fashion, E F G H M N R. Yeah, consecutive letters. You saw that right. Okay, so in case you're thinking of uh, strange words like nerve, no, that's not, not valid. Okay, nerve is a product, it's a brand. So nerve is not valid. Okay, so the thinking here should be I've run into vowel trouble. What can I do? Well, there's a few ways to go about this. 
First, you can use the vowels that are already on the board and see what you can do from there. Okay, you may also be tempted to just take the instant score, which is like 26, okay, using F-E-N or H-E-N. Okay, but doing so, you must be aware, like H-E-N has W hook in front. So, just keep that in mind. So, for me, I uh, decided to go with a very conservative option of just playing H-M. Okay, I played H-M. So, that's because H-M keeps uh, E-R and it keeps I uh, N G. And I'm waiting for ING. Okay, so there's two HMs possible. I played the 27 point HM. Okay, so notice sometimes the length of the word, right, is really not proportional to the score. As you can see, PEX scored 69, which is extremely high. And even the two letter words such as HM can score a good 27 points. So keep that in mind when considering uh, seemingly long moves or seemingly short moves. Okay, so following that, he plays uh, Rowan. Okay, I have to be frank, Rowan is not a move I would expect after he throws uh, NOT. Because I would think that, okay, he's got repeat NOT, that's why he's uh, playing the 1 point tiles away. But then he proceeds to play 4 more 1 point tiles. Like, he doesn't need them at all. Okay, usually we keep 1 point letters because they are easier to make bingos with. So now I'm on high alert, so I just want to keep it close, keep it tight, and not open up, up too many opportunities for him since I'm in the lead. So I look at this situation and think about what you would do. Okay, at first glance, you might scan for double word, which is possible. ENG. Okay, ERG. Okay, these are probably what the, the, the software will recommend in terms of higher score. But notice that in terms of balance, it is actually uh, simple but short words such as golf or flog that uh, is being preferred. That's because if that is the only spot that is open, Z-H-O-S, well, then what your, your role as a player is to make life difficult for your opponent. So you block the S lane. So notice now, after flock, it is more difficult. But for me, I'm blocking with a different style, which is to lay a trap. I am aware that GLEG does not have uh, an S. Okay, you can search Gleg, Glegger, Glegest. So it's an adjective. So in this unique case, I have uh, played GLEG. And let me simulate with this software to see uh, what it says about this move. Because it's quite unconventional. Okay, a more standard move might be flop or golf. Okay, either ways, as long as it disturbs the lane with letter S, that's fine. Okay, so in this case, uh, my move clearly does not rank well. Um, actually, on hindsight, I think it might be because go opens up ego, which means a new lane for letter E. Okay, but that said, my counterpoint would be that column I already is a bingo lane. Well, so that's not new, right? So, yeah, I played Glenn for 10. Okay, then here's when he pulls off his trick. He exchanges 1. This is an important lesson I want you, you all to learn, which is when your opponent exchanges 1, it is a level of confidence uh, that is trying that is being hinted. That means they are actually having very good tiles, so good that they can forego one turn for zero points and exchange in hopes of a bingo. So I'm on high alert right now. So re remember the ego lane that we just talked about. Okay, it is uh, indeed risky. Okay, but I felt that um, well, if he's gonna bingo, okay, he can either do it from the go back hook lane, or he can go do, do it from the go front hook lane. So I will not try to block completely. Well, it's one lane per person. Well, so I just played Jet. Okay, Jet has a back hook of E. J-E-T-E. -E. So I'm keeping the E for later use by playing Jet now. So take note, as of now, the lead is already 90, which is easily more than one bingo. So there is a certain level of uh, comfort, I would say. Okay, so guess what? Okay, if you have watched my earlier video, you will have learned that R-Sign it's one of those racks that have many bingos. 
So in this case, he indeed drew our sign. Okay, and the word he plays is just Neria. Okay, our sign with E surprisingly has no bingo. Our sign with E has no seven letter bingo. So Jesneria was indeed uh, the, the suitable play for this situation. Then for, for me, okay, I see uh, this on my rank. Okay, let me just check if, if there's any bingo. There's no seven letter bingo. Okay, and uh, good to note that there is this word Jesneria. Okay, unlikely it will ever be useful, but I was uh, seriously thinking of font at first. Okay, but then I realized, okay, hang on, let me think about the possible bingos. The words that cross my mind are, okay, enforced. Normally we hear um, reinforced, but actually enforced is good as well. Okay, and then fricando, which is a musical instruction about, I think, a bit more aggressive or violent. So fricando was played. Well, it's the only one bingo, so not much to consider. I just have to bingo. Okay. Then he plays burp. Okay, so B, U, and a P. So by putting B here, three points, you can double your score on the double letter first. That means become six points. Then add on the U and the R, seven, eight. Add on the P, nine, ten, eleven. When you triple it, it becomes thirty-three. Quite a big score, in fact. Okay, so place book. And let's see what I drew. I drew A A E E E O Q. Well, that's quite crappy, right? So um what will you do if you were in my situation? Okay, so one option is to exchange, right? That that really seems like a possible choice. But think of it this way. When you play Scrabble, right, there are two ways to go about scoring. I put it with inverted commas because to score, okay, it means you want to overtake or lead your opponent. Okay, but the idea is you can lead if you take away their scoring opportunities. So where do you think is the easiest for them to score at the moment? Which triple word is it? Okay, take a moment to think. Okay, so the answer is it is likely that they will use letter R on row number one. Okay, to to make a word. So for me, okay, I I use I decided to use area to just take away this link. Okay, so the reasoning is uh so that firstly, uh I don't return the good A's and E's into the bag for the opponent to draw. That makes no sense. Secondly, I still need to score and I still want to pick four new tiles. Okay, notice I. I made a risky decision to keep the letter Q, okay, but I was believing that with the N on the board, sooner or later, QIN should come, or QADI for, for that matter. Okay, so um, I pressed uh, simulate just to see if uh, the robot agrees with my decision, because it's quite unusual to keep Q. Okay, so yes, okay, the board agrees. It ranks it as number two. Top choice being Aeon are not really the best choice i would say because if ea k e a r e a s e a t e a n basically you make opportunities for the the opponent so i wouldn't say it's a good move i would still insist that area is the best but otherwise when you exchange here's a good tip to learn you should exchange maybe five or six tiles so as to maximize your chance of getting a plank so area was played Okay, moving on, he plays Wost, W-O-S-T. Okay, so W-O-S is already, uh, is already a valid word, but Fricando has no S. Oh no, I have been bluffed by my opponent, but unbeknownst to me, I just let it go. Okay, so that's the truth. Even outside when we play in tournaments, uh, there's a chance of getting bluffed. Okay, I'm, I'm recording this live, so I didn't uh, prepare beforehand, okay? So, um, next move, okay? As predicted, I drew an I for QIN, so now I am, like, relieved, at least as a way out. So, normally, if you get the Q, right, your top priority, I cannot emphasize this enough, top priority is to dump the Q. Okay, take note. So, there are a few ways to do it, QIN versus uh, QAID versus QA, DI. 
Okay, so for me, I saw it as if I do QA ID, the opponent can extend out the eye and float float some letters here later. So I don't want to make it uh, make it possible. Keep it tight. So I play Cardi. Okay, and how do I know this is top ranking? Well, because only one percent of bingos contain Q in the dictionary. So it's really not worth keeping. Okay, just throw the letter Q. Okay, next. Uh, he plays youth. Uh, but not Y O U T H, but Y O O F. Okay, so he he has some bad draws. Y O O. Okay, moving on. I draw E E L I N O W. Okay, nothing. Uh, no particular move was catching my attention here because it all seemed uh quite even. Okay, but take a moment to pause. Okay, I, I will hint uh, here by saying that I use E, O, and W for my next move. E, O, and W. Three letters. It's only three. So think, where will you play with E, O, and W? Well, okay. Did you say it's on row 12? Yes, okay, that is a possible option. Okay, but I did one more uh, sneaky move, which is to play O, W, E, S. And why do I say it's sneaky? Because this seemingly, seemingly normal three-letter play actually blocks the goal lane, so that words with ego cannot play any goal or a goal. Okay, so this is being very defensive here because I know he has the full dictionary. He, he studies very hard, so I will uh, block it, and it is top move. Okay, next. He gets, uh, I would say, slightly desperate. He plays a single fee. So once again, he's dropping hints at me, telling me that, okay, I'm very near a bingo, and I'm so confident that I can play a single letter. Okay, so what do I have at the moment? I have Renew D. Okay, Renew itself is a bingo step, which has many words. However, Renew D does not have any seven letter words. So given the hint that he just gave me, I asked myself, if he were to bingo, where else can he go? Keep in mind that Glag okay, was an intentional trap. It does not take S. And I believe he knows. So the most likely place that he will bingo is to the H. And you might wonder, so what what words can end with H? Uh, the answer is uh it can be the ISH prefix. Uh sorry, suffix. So for that reason, I play a simple DAH seven letter okay uh to make it difficult for him so uh, remember to count okay if it goes down seven letters one two three four five six seven the seventh letter of his word will touch gu so in other words d does not pose a risk and that's why i played it okay however i have to acknowledge that dah have has a o hook in front forming oda Okay, so keep that in mind, uh, but I don't think it makes a big difference. Mm. Here, he makes use of his uh, extensive six-letter word knowledge. He plays tenders. Okay, I do not know uh, what medical term that is. And here's the, the rack that I now have. Reline plus I. Again, reline and I uh, sounds really much like a bingo, but I do not have a choice. Okay, so next I would play something to continue blocking him. Remember his one point one tau play just now, an AV. So uh I would just block his letter S. Okay, I do not know if it's out of fear or other factors, but what struck me at the time is to just play IS. Uh oh, I recall now. I want you guys to see. Okay, I'm I'm one tau away from linear rise. So so pretend pretend I have eight thousand, which shouldn't be the case. I'll have linear rise. Okay, so so because of this, I want to uh, take a shot. I want to try. Okay, I have seven tiles. I will put the IS first so that there's a chance for linear rise. Okay, so I only play two points. Then okay, the opponent plays YA for 22 points. Okay, once again, uh Normal move, I wouldn't think too much about that. Then I have reliner. Okay, reliner. Uh, okay, wait. Reline is a word, but reliner is not. Okay. Um, however, there is a red liner, red liner, which can't play also. So red line is valid. Red liner is valid. 
So now at the loss of uh, don't know what to do, you have to think, so what can I do to keep the board tight? Keeping in mind that he's only 37 points behind now. He gives chase. So for me, okay, my, my thoughts are uh, seeing the number of vowels in the back. Okay, it is 9 out of 23 or 9 out of 21 if you ex exclude two blanks. And I'm pretty sure he has at least two vowels. Because that's the only reason that will make him uh, play Y8, using up a vowel so freely. So for this reason, I will not open. I play parallel. No, or nine points. Okay, and that's because there are two blanks unseen. With two blanks, a lot of possibilities can occur. So I want to limit the possibilities. So uh, at this moment, actually, he didn't have the blank yet. So he played five points, uh, five tiles. Okay, in an attempt to draw it. In the end, he does. Okay, and now I have regular. Regular is a is a bingo word. Okay, but once again, okay, no place to go. So I can play rag, okay, and I can also play leg. Okay, at that moment, um, I did not think that it would matter, so I decided to play leg. Okay, leg, uh, keeping Terra because I see T, uh, because there's a chance of terrapin, uh, a terrarium, plural terraria. Or uh, other other things. So I thought two R's. I can see words that are starting with T. So I rather keep two R's in this case. Same goes for your games. If you see certain letters that go well, okay, with the letters that you already have, you try to keep them. Okay. So now he makes a really daring move of uh ties, just like that. Which means it's a very strong sign that he has two bingos. Ah, uh, sorry, two blanks. And is going to bingo. So over here, I hold Brader. Okay, Brader has a few anagrams. Firstly, Brader. Secondly, Raybeater. So Raybeat is a, is a word by itself, a adjective. Briad and Badier. So um, take, bear in mind, his regs are as follows. Okay, on the top right corner, not sure if you can see. He has kites, U blank blank. That's eight letters, and he has seven of them. So to me, my 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 focus was this. I just need to make sure that his bingo does not score much. Okay. Uh, let me correct my mistake first. Uh, it is not in this position. He played ties in this position because he knows that he wants to make my bingo as useless as possible. Why useless? Well, okay. Let me show it to you. He knows that if I were to play a 7 letter bingo here, it would be uh, only 60 plus, which is something we call face value. Say face value, yes. So in this case, okay, I'll let the bot solve the scenarios because there's one tile in the back and recommend the best bingo. Okay, this one will take a while. So meanwhile, I'll discuss other things. So, um, this game is quite unusual in the sense that two blanks were held till the end and the board is about to break open because he plays ties. So the priority is to take the bingo 66 and add on to my lead of 29, maintain as high a, a spread as possible so that uh, he will not uh, outscore me even if he bingos. So in, in this case, right, the re bot recommends that I do not play Badia. Okay, Badia will rank worse than Brader. Let's see if, if it is the case. Okay, because uh, as it turns out, let, let's go into this scenario. If I play Brader, his best bingo is as, as follows. Oh, the solution is no bingo. Okay, so, so if I play Brader, he has no bingo. And I win by a bigger margin. Okay, but me being human, I do not know what is the best at the moment, so I just thought 66. I'll take the highest. What could go wrong, right? So uh what went wrong is that he he plays uh he, he got K U I E S blank blank and he plays Corys 492. So before I review the final scores, can you see? Did I win or did I lose? Remember, I'm holding one letter T after this bingo. That's one last time. 
Okay, so the answer is I want by just one. Okay, so when it comes to this situation, what should you do? First, you need to come down and ask for a recount if you're on the losing side. Okay, normally if you're already winning, you wouldn't try to expose any mistakes and make to changes to your score. Okay, so in this case, I won narrowly by one. And you should not hastily challenge just because the word is very foreign. Because in this case, if I challenge and it, it, it is valid, this will give him five points and it will lose me the game. So how do you counter this problem? Well, you can say hold. If you say hold, the opponent has to wait for your decision and you can then decide to accept or say challenge. Okay, so this is an importance of end game. I hope you can see uh, how this game turned out to be closer, even though he got both blanks at the end. Okay, so that's all from me. Yes, thank you.